It seems to me that we have gathered all of the key elements, Watson. However, before we retire, let's summarize our findings. The Yay, question Chris. should be answered yes or no and justified by the evidence or testimony received during the investigation. Bid Horace found out received a call of the evening was supposed to leave. Yes. That's what he said. Um, were all the guests in the morning at the time of shooting? Uh, yes. And that's the... the that, that one? Um, development crime. Let's see, uh, all the window. Let's see, the governess indicates you notice only two people absent from the boring Uh, yeah. And we can change that to no if that's wrong. Uh, no, they didn't have a good relationship. That's according to um, Grimble, who's obviously motivated. Might have an ulterior motive in what he's saying. Was Horace found aware of the problems between between Herman Grimble and Spromsby? Yes, we read that in. Uh, one of these letters. How could I imagine ever being betrayed in such a way? Yes. Was there anything missing from the Horace Fowlett house? Um, yes, the pillow. The pillow is missing. Did somebody enter through the window? At some point? No. Someone tried to get in through um, that, through the window, but Outside window doesn't have but it's kept by the screwdriver. We must have made an error, Watson. Let's check our answers. Okay. The question should be answered yes or no, and justified by the evidence or testimony received during the investigation. No. We must have made an error, Watson. Hmm. Let's check our answers. The question should be answered yes or no, and right. justified by the evidence or testimony received during the investigation. So... He did receive a call. That's what Murray says. Um, fellow, in, fellow came. He said, yeah, I don't know. It seems to me I saw someone at his place at nightfall. But people often visited old fellow. So yes, yes, good. Yes, I think, I think, I think that's what it says. It's, it's, yeah, only two. Mr. Horace Fallett, the victim's attorney, is sitting here. Bromsby, the domestic. Yeah. Yeah. Did Sir Bromsby and his daughter have a good relationship? No. That's from that. Was Horace found to wear the problems between. Yes, he was. Is there anything? Yes. Okay, let's say yes then to that. It is simplicity itself, oh, okay. Watson. We have answered all the questions. Ah, so he'd bought. He we shall examine the evidence closed. acquired yesterday. A wood trinket, substance from Fowler's washstand, and the gloves I found at Sheringford Hall. When I started doing this, it was just absurd. Oh, I've still got to go here. We shall examine the evidence acquired yesterday. You just wood said trinket, this. Substance from Fowler's washstand, and the gloves I found at Sheringford Hall. Now, I, I tried... Let me study this more closely. Okay, uh, won't click there can't do anything with that. What you do is you go ding. A very fine white cotton. And ding. I recognise the style of this trinket. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> Let's examine it under the microscope. So we a greasy microscope. substance. Very interesting. And it's a, a greasy substance that we knew was a greasy substance. Yay. <sighs> Famous detective. Ugh. I could not wait for you much longer. We have but a brief moment to discuss your notes before joining the inspector at Sheringford Hall. Paul Lestrade must have spent a terrible night. My word, Holmes. Even you have admitted that this case is uniquely perplexing and difficult. You are, of course, correct. I still have not arrived at a reasonable and definite explanation of these events. You see, Watson, our success lies entirely in our ability to sift through the vast amounts of facts and evidence we have at our disposal and discern which items are of true significance. We cannot allow ourselves to be blinded by the superficial logic of forced hypotheses. We also must not overlook the trifles, as by their very existence they can destroy the most solid of theories. Watson, consider this. 
All persons intimately involved with the preparations for the reception knew the precise position Sir Bromsby would occupy on that stage. It's the Frenchman. We must remark that they had this knowledge for at least a week beforehand. Numerous experts have made much of the fact that the deadly shot was of unnatural precision. We have also learned that Horace Fowlett was a renowned expert on all types of mechanical devices and automatons. Then Fowlett is found dead a mere two days ago. These facts give rise to a serious line of inquiry. I find your deductions quite probable, Holmes. But how can we explain the guest list with notes? Any probable theory about these events must correspond in all ways, including the smallest of details. Watson, I have a general idea of what you discovered during your return to the Flatham railway station. Please correct me if I get any detail wrong. You learned from the station master that several minutes before the arrival of the last train to London, two men entered the station one after another. First, there appeared a tall man clothed as a worker. His hat was lowered to hide his eyes, his right hand bandaged. He took a place in the right corner near the platform. A few moments later, Horace Fowlett came in and sat down on a bench. He spoke briefly with the station master and by all appearances seemed to be freezing. I can add that you have probably learned that the station master began to work in Flatham only four years ago. The rest you can tell yourself. Oh, really, Holmes, you were right concerning the information I received from the station master. How? When I entered the railway station. Gameplay! Hooray! So. We don't have the matchbox. Well, we shouldn't have the matchbox because we've not been given it yet. Let's talk to the station master. Hello. Uh, if you could, I need some information regarding the last scheduled train to the north. Scheduled. Specifically, the one that ran two days ago. You're one of those fellows from London working with Fletcher, aren't you? Yes. Wait a second, let's see. Two days ago, or rather two nights. Is there a difference? That was the night when Mr Fowler was here. Did you see him? As clearly as I see you now. But he didn't seem well. He was all muffled up, and every time he opened his mouth, it was to cough. The people from the village say that he's an odd one who's always amusing himself with geegaws and puppets. Okay, so... My thought on this is because we know Horace Fellett was dead. Someone came in with some of his clothes. Because Horace Fallot is... fat. That's why the pillow's missing. Uh, he's covered himself up so you can't really tell that it's not Horace Fallot. Coughs because he can't maintain the voice. Um and maybe to build a bit of sympathy, and goes out of his way to talk to the station master so that he remembers him. that That's my thought. Piecing together some other bits from various other mystery things. I think they did that once in Poirot, where she complains, like, do you know who I am? I'm the lady, the whoever, when she's already dead. But it's just to put that out there. Okay. Do you see him often? No, I don't know him that well, because he didn't travel very often. I didn't think it was a good opportunity to make his acquaintance, but he wasn't able to say more than a few words without suffering a sudden coughing Couldn't fit. Couldn't maintain the voice. It seemed he was travelling to the north. However, I cannot say with any certainty that he arrived there. Ah, go to the north, because that's a very kind of general place. Um, on this route, there's probably a lot of stations where he could get connecting trains, and then practically impossible to find him again, so... Yeah, an attempt to cover his tracks. Um, but the potatoes don't lie. Was there anyone else on the platform? Yes, there was a fellow. I could see his face beneath his cap. and For a second, I thought he had a revolver in his pocket. But then I noticed that it was merely his hand. It was all done up with a large bandage due to some wound, I suppose. Where was he, exactly? He stood in that corner over there. And Mr Fowlett arrived a bit later. I heard the sound of his coughing for about five minutes after that. When the train arrived, they boarded the same carriage. Was there any kind of deliberacy to that? And where might I find this train carriage? Why, person. right Whatever. here. They always use the same carriages when they put together the night How trains. helpful. Aha, and here it is. This is most advantageous. Oh, what a if coincidence. it would be a help, I can hold the train for one or two minutes at the station, so you might have a look inside. Thank you very much. Well, inside. I must investigate these matters. Until later, sir. Maybe one or two minutes. I don't want to go to the north. Actually, I prefer the north to London, but... 
I'm guessing Watson would rather stay in London so he can help. Oops. Okay, so let's look in the bin. There is nothing of interest here. Boo. Okay. Let's look at each of these. It uh, could be evidence. A feather. Most likely from a pillow, mayhap. Um, doesn't look like there's anything there. And then the third one. There is a hat. Someone has forgotten their cap. And I believe that hairs on it are red. Wasn't that the woman's hat? Red hairs found in a wash bowl of the smoking room. Very thin woman's hairs. Ooh, maybe they're connected. Which might explain why the hat was drawn down low. To make it tougher. Ooh. A Chirapaki cigarette. The same as Holmes found at Sheringford Hall. Um. Okay. That's interesting. Hmm. A red hair. This is splendid, Watson. I did not dare to disturb your thoughts on our way back to London last night. I had quite forgotten about this hat. Ooh, the Baker Street Irregulars. Hooray! Those faces look weird. What can we do for you today, Mr. Holmes? And the voice is weird. Come near, Wiggins. Why are you keeping this hidden from Watson and, and us? What's the point? Mind you look sharp. There'll be an extra guinea for the lad that finds him. Goodbye. We must leave now, Watson. Let us return to Sheringford Hall. All right, this is where we get to um, with that next save point. Um, one thing that we didn't see was Flatham uh, Station. On that bench there was another feather, which uh, we didn't pick up because I went to... Why have I got a knife? <laughs> um, right, so, yeah, so that... So that's one of the reasons I think the feather was from a pillow, because that's where he was sitting. Okay, uh, Sheringford Hall. Cabby! Cabby! There we go. Um. Where's Watson? Okay. Uh, let's talk to. Let's talk My to respect, Dennis. madam. It would seem that you have received good news. Oh, it's Miss Bromsby and her admirer, Lieutenant Harrington. It is wonderful to see love bloom despite such tragic circumstances. A problem for Mr. Grimble. What do you know of Wyatt Collins? Have you ever met Wyatt Collins? The nephew of the late Sir Bromsby. Oh, I have seen him just a few times since I was hired at Sheringford Hall. He stopped visiting the hall because of a quarrel with his uncle, I think. How would you describe him? He was a very tall and slender young man with a bright red hair. He's not well mannered. Which explains the hat. Um, which is the red hair from the hat. Um, I'm guessing he's a size 10, because I don't think he's the guy who killed him. I think it's the Frenchman. Because um, we, we didn't have any, any red hair apart from that belonging to a woman's here. So I don't... So, well, oh, he didn't cut his hair here. But he, I think that... Actually, no, because I think he was here because he had this, this cigarette, but the, the Chirapaki. Okay, what has Lestrade discovered? Have you seen Inspector Lestrade? He is with Miss Bromsby and Lieutenant Harrington in Sir Bromsby's office. He is waiting for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your assistance, Miss Lambert. You are surely welcome. 